This video presentation is brought to you by the Pro Mathematics Academy. Welcome back to another video presentation brought to you in part by the Pro Mathematics Academy. In this video, we'll be looking at what we call arithmetic progressions or AP for short, otherwise called an arithmetic sequence. All right, and we start off by looking at the definition. Right, which we say that an arithmetic sequence is a sequence of terms where each additional term is found by adding the common difference, all right, which is D. So let's jump into some examples, okay? And for our first example, I give you the sequence A sub N equals one, three, five, seven, nine, 11 continuing right and we know that whenever we say that the sequence continues it must be an infinite sequence all right so the first thing to note once we look at our sequence we should be able to recognize that a sub 1 which is the first term is equal to 1 right and our common difference d is equal to 2 okay let's look at example number 2 u sub n is equal to the sequence 8, 14, 20, 26, 32, continuing, right? Likewise, we should be able to write down our first term, a sub 1, which is 8, and our common difference, d, in this case, is equal to 14 minus 8, which is equal to? Six. Okay. Let's take one more example. And the key thing to note here about our sequences is that we should be able to identify the first term and the common difference. Okay. Our next sequence, a sub n equals negative one, negative four, negative 7, negative 10, negative 13, continuing. Now, this one seems a bit tricky. What number am I adding each time? We can write down our first term as negative 1, right? But here, our common difference is no longer positive because we can also have a negative common difference, okay? So let's do this by taking any two consecutive terms and subtracting them. Here I'm going to choose negative 4 and negative 7. So let's go negative 7 minus minus 4, right? And here we see that this is equal to negative 7 plus 4, which is equal to negative 3. So therefore, our common difference in this case is equal to negative 3. So each time we're adding negative 3, okay? So we should never think that our common difference is something we are subtracting. It must be something that we are adding, and it can be negative, okay? Let's continue with some more examples. Okay, this time we want to look at the sequence and determine the next term that follows in the sequence. Okay, this is a basic example that um, students should be able to follow once they are looking at this topic. All right, so let's go. Number one, if a sub n is equal to negative 2, negative 5, negative 8, negative 11, continuing, right? What is a sub 5, right? What is a sub 5? Here I use a sub 5, and this represents the fifth term in the sequence. So let's make a note of that. a sub 5 is the fifth term in the sequence. So if we look at this sequence, we see that we have been given three terms. The first term is negative 2, the second term is negative 5, the third term is negative 8, the fourth term is negative 11, and the question is asking us for the fifth term. So what is this fifth term? So we have to look at our sequence and figure out what type of sequence it is, and how do we get to the next term, all right? So looking at this sequence, we should realize that it is an arithmetic progression because, of course, we're doing the topic under we're doing arithmetic progressions 
right? But under normal examination conditions, you don't know what the sequence is. You have to figure it out. All right, so this one is an arithmetic progression. So we can say that a sub 1 is equal to negative 2 and d is equal to negative 8 minus minus 5. Okay, so I just chose two random terms there. This is going to be negative 8 minus, well, that becomes a plus 5. So this gives us a common difference of negative 3. Okay, now that we have negative 3, we need to add that term to the previous term. Okay, so therefore, we see that a5 is equal to a sub 4 plus the common difference d. Right, we have a sub 4, it's equal to negative 11, and I'm adding negative 3. So therefore, my fifth term is going to be negative 14. All right. So we must use the principles that govern arithmetic progressions in solving these problems, okay? So let's take one more example. Example number two under more examples, and this is still our basics. So we, we take this one, if a sub n is equal to two, seven, 12, 17, 22, 27, right? What is a sub 7? And here, a sub 7, by now, we should be able to recognize that. This is the 7th term in the sequence. Okay? So that means a sub 7 is equal to a sub 6 plus the common difference. Right? What is a sub 6? a sub 6 is 27. Right? So we need to figure out our common difference here, which is d. And once we plug that in, we should be able to figure out what is a sub 7. So the common difference can be found by taking any two consecutive terms. Here I'm going to use 27 and 22. So if I take 27 and I subtract 22, then I end up with 5. So therefore, our common difference is 5. Always remember to check and ensure that the common difference works for all the terms. Okay, so if I subtract the first term and the second term, I should end up with the same common difference. Okay, so we just did a quick check. 7 minus 2 equals 5. So we'll continue. So this means that our final answer must be 27 plus 5, which means our answer is 32. Right? A good student would look at the sequence and recognize that a the first term is 2 the second term is 7 and the third term is 12 and I'm looking at this pattern of twos and sevens okay and once you look at the sequence and you're that good you can see that a the next term must be something with a 2 and the next number must be 32 all right so that's one way you could have figured it out intuitively or naturally all right That is it for this video. Please remember to hit the notification bell, like, share, and subscribe for future post notification.